try to deflect blame for his conduct and their consequences, blasting Republicans and President Trump testifying for nearly six hours before House lawmakers. So another day of Hillary Clinton's emails and the Steele dossier. This while the President of the United States is lying about the FBI, attacking the FBI, and attacking the rule of law in this country. How does that make any sense at all? Republicans used to understand that the actions of a president matter, the words of a president matter, the rule of law matters, and the truth matters. Well, joining us now, James Colstrom, former assistant director of the FBI. He served nearly 30 years with the Bureau. Jim, it's great to have you with us. Uh, uh, so it, it, there, it used to matter who ran the FBI. Uh, your sense of uh, what is going on in the FBI and its leadership still and the the performance of this disgraced former FBI director. Yeah, Jim Comey is just, uh, I don't know, I guess if, you know, you looked at a, a picture of someone who was a narcissist, you'd have Jim Comey's, that would be the picture you'd have in the book. You know, the guy's just out of his mind. The notion that the FBI reputation has been soiled, not because of him, but because of other things. I mean, it's because of him. And it's because of the other five or six or 10 or 12, whatever the number is, people around him, the McCabe's of the world, the Strucks of the world, the Pages of the world, and all the rest of these people. Everyone who was associated with him has been sullied and soiled and disgraced, whether they've been fired yeah. or whether they've been resigned. Yeah, he's an educated nimwit. I mean, and he promoted people of his ilk around him. I guess so he wouldn't feel the, you know, you know, he'd feel like he was still going to be the imperial wizard. You know, the guy is just out of his mind, quite frankly, but he's done criminally. Uh, the, the federal violations he's uh, put himself into and, and, and the bureau, you know, and he has zero support now in the FBI. He carried out an investigation against the president of the United States for nearly a year before there was a special counsel. It's unclear to anyone right now why, how he got away with it, and well, why it, there was not some check, because as far it, as we know, no other FBI director in history <laughs> has done that. He got away with it because he was a lieutenant in Obama's intel army. Yeah. He was a lieutenant in the army with others, Brennan et al., Clapper et al., you know, this whole conspiracy. The, First off, to stop Trump, right, and then if he by some miracle uh, was elected, you know, to make his I, I, administration worthless. You know, I, I, I think back every time we talk about the intelligence apparatus of the Obama administration unleashed on this president, I can recall vividly when the president said that he was being wiretapped and the national left-wing media mocked him, said, no, <laughs> ridiculous, no evidence, blah, blah, blah. It turns out it was worse than wiretapped. It was a it was persecution. It was surveillance. It was spies within his own orga, his campaign organization. There was nothing that they didn't resort to to try to destroy right. this man as a candidate and, and then as a president. And you look at these timelines, you know, meetings at the White House with Obama and just a few other people. He goes to New York to br to brief the president on certain things. He stays behind, you know, and he. Uh, mischaracters, yeah. you know, the actual uh, steel, do you know, the steel document. Then he lets CNN, of course, ahead of time, know that he was going to do that. Right. Then he signals, okay, it's okay, CNN, you got the hook. You can, you can do your show. I mean, the whole thing is just... Uh, it, it, it's it, disgraceful. It's it, totally it, disgraceful. And what he did to General Michael Flynn uh, is, it is just disgusting. Uh, and uh, tomorrow uh, will there will be a sentencing, and for what? Sentencing him for what? What they did to General Flynn is just an absolute, total outrage. The American people should be outraged. You know, what they did with him, they bankrupted him. You know, they made him sell his house. They made him do all kinds of things over nothing, and over some today, grudges. And then they announced today that they're going after his two business partners right. uh, as uh, foreign lobbyists. Uh, well, I hope Judge Sullivan throws the case out. I hope he chastises 
everybody involved in this witch hunt. I mean, they were out of control what they did to him. They were in violation of the Constitution. They were in violation of the privacy I, regulations. The unmaskings, we haven't even talked about that. And, and that, I, I know in your view, that's a bigger uh, scandal than any of all of Hundreds the and hundreds of unmaskings that have not, the evidence of which the have, not, administration. have not seen the light of day yet. Right. You know, who knows what the number is? Maybe it's a thousand. But it was all part of this scheme that was hatched in the White House with the Nash, national security team and guys like uh, Comey. Joining me now, Congressman Darrell Issa, House Judiciary Committee member who was not in the room today but has been receiving updates from his colleagues on that committee who were in the room. Uh, and he joins me now, Congressman Issa. What did you think about uh, what you've heard about today and about, about Comey's comments in the hallway to reporters? Well, I think the hallway uh, says it all. What former Director Comey just did was mock Miranda. He literally said, oh, we should have told him he had a right. That's laughable. You know, literally trying to roll back a Supreme Court decision that has been the law of the land for decades, that he, his entire career was an expectation when somebody was a target, would be bad enough. But let's talk about what he really did. He, he fails to tell the president, when he's the president-elect, that in fact they're already doing this investigation. He then interviews the national security advisor right after he becomes a national security advisor in the White House, traps him into a lie because they've already, they've already recorded his conversation with the Russian uh, uh, ambassador. So now what they're doing is three days later, he sits there with President Trump, President Donald Trump, his boss, and he, President Trump asks about, Comey, asks about Flynn, and what does Comey do? He doesn't tell him that he's got the goods on his national security mm. advisor who has lied to the vice president. Now, if you forget about all the criminal stuff and everything else, he had an obligation to let the president know that he had a national security advisor that was now a risk. But if he had done the job properly, when he had unmasked uh, Flynn to begin with, he would have gone to the president with that. And this would never have happened. It was clear he was always part of the insurance policy. His goal was to entrap not just General Flynn, but the president. And he thinks he's done it. I, I hear everything you're saying. Um, you know, you just said that he sort of wanted to cast aside Miranda rights when he talked to Michael Flynn, but then you said cast aside all of the criminal stuff. And, and James Comey's saying we can't do that. He lied no. to FBI agents and he lied about meeting with Kislyak and he didn't tell the truth about talking about sanctions with Kislyak. And to Comey, that is what matters more than anything. You see, but that's not what matters. At the moment that he unmasked General Flynn talking to uh, a foreign agent, he owed the president an explanation, unless he was trying to entrap the president-elect, if you will. Remember, this is the Obama administration getting the goods, the insurance policy, if you will, on the president, creating a crime where there was no crime. Ultimately, the, the discussion with General Flynn wasn't a crime. They're not charging him with that. The lying to the vice president, although wrong, might not have been a crime. But Comey withholding this from the president when directly asked is, in fact, the kind of a thing that causes you to know that he was not only never loyal to the president, but he was even before Donald Trump was yeah. president, he was already part of souring the presidency by not giving him things that he needed to know, uh, for example, you know, I, not, I not to have Flynn be his national security I, I, advisor, I mean, for example. I think both things can be true. I, um, both things are true, that, that he should not have misled the vice president. He should have said, I did, I did talk to Kislyak about the sanctions, and here's what we talked about. Here's why I felt like it was okay. Obviously, I can't do anything about the sanctions now, but we talked about what might happen in the future. It's part of the transition, all, all of that as, as you go through. But your point about the fact that why he would not do one of two things, tell the president, look, this is what we have on this transcript of this conversation. You need to know about this with your national security advisor and why when they had Flynn in the room in the situation room talking to him why didn't they slide that transcript in front of him and say look General Flynn 
We have your transcripts because he says during the conversation, you already know what I said, I would imagine, because as a former head of an intelligence agency, he knew they probably had those conversations. Well, he certainly uh, should have known, and quite frankly, he should have known to go in with White House counsel because that was a responsibility he should have had. But Comey and the FBI carefully uh, tricked him, or maybe used his ego against him, but tricked him into not doing it. Again, though, then FBI Director Comey had every reason to prevent General Flynn from being the national security advisor if he thought he had done wrong. Instead, what he did was he let him become the national security advisor, failed to answer the president's questions as he was trapping him into a criminal charge and then squeezing him to try to get something against the president of the United States. The reality is this investigation, long before there was a uh, special investigator with Mueller, was really about Comey going after the president. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when you consider that the IG has held former director essentially uh, accountable for wrongdoing, what we're seeing again is an out of the control, corrupt, and I repeat that, corrupt uh, FBI director who ha was on a mission and forgot that his number one mission was to protect national security, which is not always about getting a charge on somebody. It is often about stopping a crime from happening. He made no effort to stop a crime from happening. And that is probably the best reason in the world yeah. that what the President Trump did in firing Comey was the right thing and should have been done on day one. Congressman Darrell Issa, thank you very much. Good to have you with us tonight. Right.